What is up guys again, not the worst here, bringing another Black Desert online video, and today we're taking a look at the patch notes for May 25th. We do see a lot of the new updates that we've had implemented on the global labs being brought over to live servers. If you were looking for the uh, class tweaks and buffs and nerfs and things, those are not quite live. Looks like we'll have another week or two um, of a few more tweaks on the global labs before those go live, so you have to hang tight on that but what we did get moved over a big one a lot of people were really looking forward to is the new marnie's realm this is a private server that you're going to be able to access within certain grind zones so that you're going to get one hour per day to grind uninterrupted uh, entirely the actual total time is an hour and five minutes per day that you get on it um, just kind of give you a little five minute buffer there to get your uh, buffs up and whatnot or head to wherever you're going but you'll be able to head to the zone there and then as you see on the screen there you get this little pop-up you can enter and it'll switch switch you over to that private server for uh, that one hour, it's got a list of all the zones, it's not absolutely everything, but some of the more popular stuff, of course, Orcs, Bloody Monastery, those are definitely in there, um, we've, you've got Shira Ruins, Blood, uh, Blood Wolves, Polly's Forest, um, so any of those big, like, SP zones, as well as the, uh, the, uh, Potion Piece drop zones as well, some of the other treasure items, uh, all in there, so you can at least get, uh, a little bit of peace to yourself, I know a lot of people that don't get a lot of time to play, and only play during prime times, are definitely going to be looking forward to that. Uh, we got the improvements to monsters zone rewards and the item drop rate adjustments which was also implemented on global labs essentially um item drop rates were increased in different ways uh as far as like ecology um for that amount and the cap for it is now going to be 300 percent total item drop rate we didn't get the uh gauge that tells you what your current item total item drop rate amount is uh, but that should be coming in the next week or two as well and then you can get an additional 100 percent with the arsha buff and the castle buff if you have the uh, owned territory with your guild so there's a maximum of 400%, 300% through items, and then an additional 100% with those two other ways. Along with this, we do see that uh, Arsha is going to now stack with the item drop rate event. Whenever we have that, that means Arsha will be a 100% total drop rate during that event, as opposed to having no effect, um, and then adjusting that. So uh, this is actually pretty cool to see across the board. And then to tie in with that, we had some uh, drop rate adjustments to different grind zones. Something that they mention here, um, as far as like actual specifics on it, uh, they talk about like Kadri, for instance, is well known known for Rosar weapons and uh, uh, Blackstones dropping, and they have um, increased the Kafris uh, and the scroll drop rate on those while decreasing the other items and to kind of modify what you're seeing. They've also implemented specific zones that have uh, a target for specific types of grind, Agris Fever, Spectre's Energy, Kafris Stones, um, not using item collection scrolls at all in certain zones, Combat and Skill XP, and then others, uh, which is notably artifact drop rates. Um, at uh, Kratuga for it. So we've got a list of what are now <clears throat> now considered Agris Fever monster zones for it. Things like Crescents, Gahas, Centaurs, Achman, History of Kratuga, uh, Upper Gyphon, uh, Turos, Jade Starlight Forest, and Olin's Valley uh, are now to be exceptionally efficient for your Agris. Spectre's Energy monster zones kind of come up to the level of what Thornwood has been. Prati Cave, Shere Khan at night, Sakrea Upper, as well as ones that had uh, just increased, which is almost across the board there, a little increase on that. Kafris Stone monster zones is Mansions and Thornwood now. Um, just to note, these aren't going to beat like Olin's or Gyphon uh, Underground or anything like that, but the amount of Kafris that they now drop uh, was brought up compared to other places at those AP levels that are recommended. Um, and this one's kind of interesting. We see item collection increased gauge unavailable zones. So the idea here is that you're out of them uh, and you don't need them. You can't use them anymore uh, and the, so that you have a somewhat of an option in places to grind when you don't have them. The Bazzy Den three-man party, uh, Sakrea Upper, uh, and then the Winter Tree Fossil 250 and 280 zones as well. Then we've got various combat and skill XP, summer combat, summer skill, summer combat and skill like Prodi. Uh, also Sakrea um, Upper and Gyphon Upper falling under that last category. Then the other category, we have the Gathering Reward Monster Zone is Navarin Step. And then as I mentioned earlier, the Artifact Monster Zone, Kurtuga, is now going to drop uh, every type of artifact that is not a life skill type. So all of the combat types can be dropped at Kurtuga. I don't know the drop rates on this, hopefully insanely high because... Uh, Otherwise, if you're getting, you know, an artifact or two uh, every couple hours and it could it has a drop pool of any of them, that'd be kind of annoying. So hopefully it drops a ton of these um, over time. But we'll map that out and figure that out later on. We also see the increase to trash loot prices fairly drastic uh, with it. So things like Fattest going from 2100 to 9671, Polly's up to 9720. Um, Navarin Step the, has obviously various monsters and varying amounts of trash loot there. Mansions up to 12,700. Gyphon Upper up to 16,700, which actually isn't that much 
uh, of a buff there. I still feel like Gyphon Upper is kind of uh, um, pretty underpowered, especially considering it's a five-man party zone. It's kind of like a, a dated piece of content still, even with these updates. So also Contribution XP Monster Zones, where you can do a weekly quest to gain Contribution uh, points pretty much right away, up until you get to 350. And then at that point, you won't be able to do it from there. That's kind of implemented to help uh, newer players get up there at least into the 350 zone from there. Um, they did make a little bit of an adjustment to the uh, Mansions piece. It can now also drop off of the Great Warriors, not just uh, the Shaman. And then they slightly decreased the drop rate of the Shaman to kind of spread it out a little bit. That one for sure, if you're going, if prior to Pity Pieces existing, uh, that place for sure had a, the most difficult time getting that to drop since you had much less um, of the Shamans. And then sometimes you'd run into some jabroni that's trying to run like the entirety of the whole map and only target the shamans and you have to kill them 47 times and go negative karma because you know that's the game um item drop rate was increased for shirkhan's uh, panacea and the dragon's fang lootable from defeating the shirkhan necropolis nighttime uh items there and improved to be guaranteed an ember of frost when you kill the wayne winter guardian uh, as well uh, and then moving into Black Magic Crystal improvements, this was also seen on Globe Labs a while back. Uh, you can essentially stack Black Magic Crystals. You're going to get this sealed uh, Black Magic Crystal item that can now be um, stacked on top of each other. Uh, so that's kind of a little quality of life improvement there. Then the item drop rate increase improvements like Ecology that I mentioned uh, before. For instance, if you have, let's say, 6,000 points prior to this update, you'd have a 16% drop rate increase. That's now going to go up to 20%. And the highest amount before used to be at 8,000, which is 20%. That's now 25%. You can now go up to 9,000 and 10,000, which is 27 and 30% respectively as well to push that up a little bit more for you. Um, the item drop rate increase, that permanently increases by 10% once you reach 7,000 points for family fame is now introduced as well. So you got an extra bonus 10% drop rate uh, included along that to go towards your maximum of 300%. Moving over into events for this week, we've got uh, some new daily login rewards that are kind of, yeah, whatever. And then we have Monsters Beware. It's drop rate hot time. If uh, you thought accessory prices uh, for things were starting to look pretty decent, well, guess what? We're going right back into another drop rate event. So there you go. At least Arsha will be popping off with the uh, new stacking of those drop rate events being implemented. Other than that, we really didn't get uh, much going on. They moved uh, Muskin and the Sonal Siege Captain Dark Rifts like they did well, with the other ones to not interfere with Elvia spots. We see the new Springtime UI if you want to run that. That uh, is now an option there. It's got the little fluffy alpaca thing with a couple of shies goofing around on there. Whatever the hell the shies do during the day, I have no idea. Um, so that's pretty much it. Let's jump over to the pearl shop and take a look at probably one of the best costumes that have been introduced maybe ever. This is the Kyrnos uh, Sage outfit. This thing is insanely cool. It has uh, They didn't include the video on here. There is a video on BDO's um, YouTube channel if you want to check it out. Uh, or you can just check it out in the shop in-game. I like when they have the videos on the on the actual patch note page, but that's just me. Uh, it has the, like a really insane um, idle animation. He glows all sorts of lightning and stuff around him and then actually floats in the air. Super Super freaking cool. It's 3,400 pearls if you want to pick up that one. I'm sure that's going to be an extremely popular outfit. So definitely try and uh, roll the dice on getting lucky if you're trying to pre-order one off the market there. To go along with that, we've got the triple premium outfit pack. 6,800 pearls and like the title says, it's got three premium outfits there and five item drop scrolls to go along with it. Uh, we've got weight and inventory. Again, they've been pushing these a lot lately. I'm not entirely sure if I'm understanding why um, this far into a season release, but hmm, something like that. Backpack bundle slots for a, a total bundle of 50 if you want to pick those up. We've got choose your two Guardians of Ataraxian pack. Um, here that you can pick between Karchios, Marishan, Latron, Monoceros, or Putrachium, along with 10 nutritionist, nutritious supplements there at 1650 for that pearl pack if you want to pick that up. And we've also got for 1650 the Fantastic Young Dragon available, and then you'll also get to choose either Master Enhancers Rarities, Dream Horse, or Magic Crystal Rarities, uh, a couple of different boxes there uh, that you're going to roll the dice on. Arctic Fox is back in the shop. He comes around from time to time. That is the drop rate bonus at... Um, a percentage equivalent to his tier. So if you have a tier four, it's a 4% drop rate increase. 1,800 pearls as is a standard on that one. They're going to throw in five nutritious supplements and five item loot scrolls to go along with it. We see a 15% sale on the tent, which isn't super appealing because we've seen 25 and more in the past, but it's 4,165 pearls if you're thinking about getting it. It's not a terrible time to do it. Weekly outfit sale is the Karasaur Berserker outfit this week for 2720 pearls as per usual. Then we have a, a special offer value pack uh, for May's first time customer promotion. You can if you uh, 
purchased uh, pearls for the first time in the month of May. You, for 750 pearls, you get a 30-day value pack. It's 50% off there. And if you're a returning customer, then for five pearls, you get a three-day Blessing of Old Moon that it gives you the value pack, uh, the book, and Blessing of Kamasil to go along with it there. There's a little picture of separating the costume for the Striker Weed In uh, outfit like we see week after week is worked on. So there you have it for this week's patch notes and uh uh, excuse me, patch notes and pearl shop for this week. I am pretty excited to see what else we get on the global labs. Uh, I've been pretty happy with the tweaking that uh, the class changes have been seeing on the global labs and looking forward to seeing a little bit more before they go onto live servers. So hopefully we do see some more of that in the next couple of days. Let me know what you guys think about what's going on in the comments down below. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to like it. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe so you get notifications when new videos do go live. And if you'd like to catch me playing live, there's a link to my Twitch page. It's in the description down below. You can jump on over there, drop a follow so you get notifications for that as well. With that said, that's going to be it for this one. I want to thank everybody for watching and I will see you next time.